In this video we're going to look at deriving the equation for equivalent series resistance. Now what does that mean? It means I have two resistors here and I want to replace them with one resistor which I shall call RT, T standing for total. And the question is what value should that be? Now if it's equivalent it should do the same thing. Let's build a circuit. Here is a source of EMF, a cell in effect. EMF E and we'll apply the same source of EMF E to our resistor we're trying to find and what should happen is the source of EMF should make some current flow we'll call it I and because these two resistors are in series R1 and R2 they have the same current and because RT is equivalent it too should have the same current now we need to remember our resistor equation V equals IR and because that's so important, we'll make it look important. Let's start with the left-hand circuit. For the first resistor, we have a voltage V1. And for the second resistor, we have a voltage V2. And each of those obeys the resistor equation. So V1 equals I R1. And V2 equals I R2. And for the right hand circuit we have VT and VT equals I RT. So far so good. Now we call up Kirchhoff's laws and understand that in the left hand circuit the EMF is equal to the sum of the two potential differences for two voltages. And in the right hand circuit it's trivial, the EMF is just equal to the one potential difference. But because these circuits are equivalent, they must be the same, so the EMFs are the same, so that allows us to combine our equations and write V1 plus V2 equals VT. And now if we substitute for V1 for IR1, we write IR1 plus and we substitute V2 IR2 and we substitute for VT IRT and because the circuits are equivalent, each of those currents cancels out, same in every term. So we're left with R1 plus R2 equals RT. And that's the equation for series resistors. Let's see what that actually means in practice. So we'll pick a nice new color, let's say orange. Let's make this resistor here, let's say for instance 10 kilo ohms. And we'll make R2, just as an example, 12 kilo ohms, so they're not the same. Then if I wanted to replace them with one resistor, I add them together. 10 plus 12 gives me 22 kilo ohms. Use a single 22 kilo ohm resistor instead of the 10 and the 12. So now we're going to try and do a similar thing for parallel resistors. We have here a pair of parallel resistors, R1 and R2 which could be part of the circuit, and we want to find the equivalent resistance, RT, which I can replace those two parallel resistors with a single resistor. We'll use the same approach, we'll build a circuit, so we'll apply a cell, and we'll use EMFE again, and we'll apply a cell to this one, and we'll apply EMFE to this one, and if the two circuits are equivalent, the cell should provide the same current to both circuits, so a current I, and this one provides a current I which flows round through the resistor and we get I just there. However, in the case of these two resistors we get different currents flowing in different directions. We get I1 going that way and I2 going that way and when they come back together again at the other end they add back up to give us our current I. We should probably call that IT for total current just to be consistent. So let's start with our equations again. So we still know that V equals IR, which is a very important relationship, but rearranging that we'll find I equals V divided by R. And that's the equation we're going to use for this derivation. Now let's have a look at Kirchhoff's laws. We know that this resistor here will have a res voltage V2 across it. This resistor here will have a voltage V1 across it. 
and this resistor here will have a voltage Vt across it. And what does Kirchhoff's law say about that? Well, it says that in parallel the EMF and potential differences are the same. So E equals V1 equals V2, and over on this side E equals Vt. For each one we can write the current in terms of the resistor equation. So we get I1 equals V1 over R1, and we get I2 equals V2 over R2, and over this side we get simply IT equals VT over RT, so it's all looking good so far. Now we need to include Kirchhoff's current law. Kirchhoff's current law is that at a junction IT, the current going in or out of a junction, is equal to I1 plus I2, and we can take that equation and put in our values for I1 and I2 and IT, so we end up writing VT over RT equals I1, which is V1 over R1, plus I2, which is V2 over R2. Now remembering this very important part here, okay, all of these voltages, this Vt, the V1 and the V2, they're all the same, so we can cancel them. But what do we have to leave on the top? Well, we have to leave something on the top, so we leave a 1, because it's effectively 1 times Vt. So we end up with 1 over RT equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. And that's our parallel resistor equation. Very important, and we should be able to derive that. So there you go. Now I've just put the Windows calculator on the screen. So what we're going to do now is we're going to try and do a numerical example. So let's choose a new colour again. So we'll arbitrarily make R1 the same as we did last time. We'll make it 10 kilo ohms. We'll make R2 the same as we did last time, 12 kilo ohms. Those two are in parallel. So what value should we be able to choose to our equivalent resistor? So we'll get our calculator back. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take 10 kilo ohms. And we're going to press the one over button. We're going to add on to it the second resistor, which is 12 kilo ohms, one over it. And we're going to press the equal sign, and that's our total. Now that's one over the total resistance, so we press the one over button again, and we get 5,454 uh, 5, ohms. So our total, our equivalent resistor, is 5,000. 450 ohms. So if I wanted to replace a 10k and a 12k, I would have to use a resistor of value 5450 ohms or 5k5 approximately.